How the hell can I make a sad face? These. Can't. This kind of looks like one. <laughs> I don't know. alert ready to go oh green hearts that's a shame shame for him yo it's been a long time dan nice Got a nice cape. Oh, Raph, man, thank you. For the fives. I was super wiped out today. I did a whole bunch of stuff. Two birthday parties, <laughs> among other things. So, needed a nap instead of work. Couldn't make it. But that did me good. I'm back on track right now, so I'm going to do some of this. Well, I got a busy week coming up here. We got the first arcade pit on GDQ. We got regular arcade pits today in, you know, 20 hours. Um, got some people flying in to help me with the live panel in Pittsburgh. And that's probably going to be a weekend of work, uh, broadcasting and otherwise. There's a mushroom up there. Come Monday... September will be over. I'm doing a marathon um, this upcoming Monday. I'll be on all day. If you're a patron or sub and you haven't voted on that, it's open. The link is on Patreon and in my Discord server. I haven't actually pushed anything for September yet, so I'm just going to do that one day, probably. Probably going to be it, see how I do. The thing on Twitch now, whether I like it or not, is um, you can't maintain 350 regular subs. You do not get their contract, which is really... I hate that kind of grind, but that's the life, I guess. It's a good idea for me to take a day to just do some popular content all day. See if it drives anything. Let's turn this on. I got some good ideas. Um, for Monday's content though. This Monday in, you know, two days. AI Arena is probably gonna happen. We got the trombone game. Various gong shows. Last time we did PS2 and Xbox. I can do that again. Or NES. And then there's um ranking my least favorite SNES games <laughs> and seeing which ones are actually the worst. I would probably give them each like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so that would be a time consuming one. An official worst games list. The 
the game I was playing when I first got my sub badge thing uh, partnership eight years ago plus was XCOM enemy uh, unknown and within and I was thinking about playing that again. I never did get good enough at it to beat it on uh, ridiculous mode, but eh, <laughs> it kind of sucks to do that. I was playing Civ Five around that time as well, pretty often, but it was, it was honestly that and. Uh, XCOM and um, Gong Show that was popular back then. I started Arcade Pit later that year. Um, November ish, I was teasing people with uh, the art I was working on, nobody knew why I was drawing a TV, they were making fun of my photoshops, like uh, like my TVs are bad, everybody liked them. When it came down to it, I'm not an artist, but I know what I want it to look like. But they didn't know what the hell I was making it for. <laughs> I grew up with Nick Arcade, so I like it for as weird as it is. I met Phil Moore, the host at Magfest. Considered having him like guest as a commentator, but I don't know if that's gonna work out or not. That would be fun though if that happened. I think he'd be interested. He's just probably a very busy guy. It sounded like he was trying to get a TV syndication again for his shows. But they had him hosting the Nick Arcade thing at Magfest. And he knew who I was, roughly. Well, I'm going to be needing to double dip <laughs> for Wednesday uh, twice a month on Arcade Pit. I'm going to be needing to... Um, I should have used the flute. I completely forgot I had it. Anyway. I'm going to be pulling content for that. People that I think are experienced only pretty much will be able to play on that version of it. People I know will not cause me tech issues. I will invite if you sign up for that on the calendar and we see you. It's my preference, even though we're doing two games on those uh, GDQ things, to use the same four players. I can. This is going to be a little gross, actually. I'm going to use bombs. It's gonna be hopefully a recurring thing. We'll see how it goes. I think if it uh, it's popular, like if um, if people actually watch it and they don't hate it, if those two things are true, and we don't like break any rules or whatever, yeah, I would expect that it might be recurring. We'll see. I guess I'm not sure. That is my goal. Oop. Ow. 
who will be running Wednesdays uh, multiple times every other Wednesday, starting this one. Moon Pearl. Didn't find a whole lot there. Thank you. Excited to work with GDQ in any capacity, though. For real. It's nice. Nice contract. I can't believe that doesn't explode just because it was in my hands. Not that I meant to pick it up. He picked it up over the pot. This cane is the worst. I don't know if I ever liked this dude, but I definitely do not anymore. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna actually go to the Dark World now, I guess. After playing through FF4 DS. And living through his weird character arc. While being voiced by um, a Twitch streamer at this point. Um, but uh, it, the voice actor wasn't the problem. But um, I'm familiar with that guy on uh, Critical Role, I think. Oh, I need another bomb. I might as well just go buy it now. I just, uh... thought that Kane was a huge part of the problem with the story. They just let him die. They <laughs> just let me deal with this guy and don't give me this nonsense mind control crap. Over and over again, too. Like, once is bad enough, but three times? Because he's a weak character with no willpower? And he's jealous or whatever? On the earthquake. I can't really do anything over here except for the, um... Gonna, I'm just gonna check these two things and then save and quit again. That's a good check. It's mountain time. I can fly up there, so it's not even that bad. I still don't have a sword, though. Checks. <laughs> Perfect. I hate his character mechanically. I always thought Dragoons were one of the goofiest classes. Um, I don't know that I've ever enjoyed them. Uh, 14 made them a, a DPS that was just worse than the ranged ones from what I was playing, from my perspective. And that was the best I've ever seen them be in any game. FF9 has Freya, who's probably this decent turn-based character, but again, not really making much sense. She's in the back row jumping, so that kind of makes sense. I just don't get it. Like, why what is this character for? <laughs> like, even as there's a gimmick in FF4, specifically, 
to use jump and win. It's still, I was still like, I don't really want him on my party. I'd rather just deal with the gimmick. He's strange. Jumping out of the way worked in FF, I think it was three. There were a lot of bosses that were like one-shotting the whole team and jump would avoid the damage and still win. And I get it. I just don't like it. It feels bad. I'd rather the boss be designed well and the Dragoon not exist, I think. <laughs> I just don't like them at all. In tactics, I didn't really understand it very much. The jump was weird. Uh, I would say that it didn't work very well. They would jump to an empty tile if the enemy moved. It took forever. I wanted the, the perks from being a Dragoon and I wanted to put it on a better class. That's what I did in tactics. Ah, I want that lamp. But I need the mirror first. No way to get it. I don't care about the heart. Not worth the time to get it anyway. I would like it, but not that much. I would say just like Tactics Ogre, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics just has a couple of old problems that even when they remake it, they don't really fix. Um, I should try some of the other versions of it. I really want to play the Game Boy Advance Tactics game for Tactics Ogre's franchise. And I sure would like to mod and, and fix up the new Tactics Ogre game. But I need so much help with that. I need a real programming genius. And that's not me. I'm just the ideas guy. Worthless. <laughs> Worthless. Wow. Um, if I go here, this might work. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe not. I don't remember exactly how to do that bomb jump. You can definitely do it. It's not even a hard one. I just don't remember the positioning. I want to go to Tower of Hera now, I think. Yeah, the new Tactics Ogre radically changed things. Um, I would say way worse, way for the worse. And it's it's because they based it on the PSP version, which I hate um, mechanically. I really like the other things that put in voice acting and stuff is great. The UI is decent. The auto leveling thing is a pretty good way to keep it balanced, which is a big problem for the original version. But they turned everyone into a tank. Um, archers are completely worthless instead of being busted. I don't like the system. I don't like having to do a bunch of debuffs to remove the enemy when, uh... I mean, the, the original game had a damage problem where you would do 100 damage to some tank and he'd only have 200 health and everyone could do it. The armor was worthless, but they went the other way with it where armor is so good that you can't even kill them at all. Tower of Hera's looking good. It's a crystal. And so far, um, we might not need to go in the basement. I don't get into tactics uh, games very often. They're okay. But there's so many of them and um, the story matters a lot, I think. More than mechanics. Which is telling for Tactics Ogre and it's crafting and all that other item bloat and all that other stuff I can't stand. That I couldn't finish the story, which I like. Uh, I think it's a neat political intrigue story. I wish it didn't go off the deep end like they always do, where you're fighting ogres in hell at the end of the game. <laughs> but until then, until chapter four, it's pretty good. I didn't make it to chapter four because I couldn't stand it anymore. It was so slow, it was so boring. 
the changes they made were just not fun. Do you have to fight the Hell Ogres? Oh, wow. I can't believe he even got me with that nonsense. I got hit by my own sword there. Hey, Alta Blues, welcome in. Welcome in, everybody. Right before we get to Moldorm for the first time. That's right. No. Thanks for coming in, everybody. I just started because I'm running late tonight. Oh, we gotta go to the basement. I don't have any fire. The new Tactics Ogre game is weird. Did you spend a ridiculous amount of time crafting? Because that's part of it. And I, I hate that so much. That is one of the changes. Crafting existing at all is a PSP change. I'm gonna have to come back later. It, it's really like disgusting. The crafting is so in your face in that game. And it, it fills up your inventory with a bunch of plus one, plus three, plus five swords. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. It's one of the worst ones I've ever seen. You will spend hours crafting so that you're able to do damage instead of just having the numbers be tuned. The tactics game I want, um, and the change I would make to that one, if I could, the remake, would be to, like, just have a bunch of different items. Like, it's okay that the knife isn't the strongest thing. You don't need five versions of the knife. You don't really need a knife that's just straight better, either. I would make all of them do something. The knife should be light. You don't need a plus five knife. You don't need seven types of swords. Two-handed variations of them, too, and then having plus crafting on all of them also. It's so many items. It's such a gross, bloated thing. Where do I go? Yo, thanks for the subs. Appreciate it. Um, let's go to the, the escape. The simplicity of the original Tactics Ogre's equipment was part of its charm. It was a little too simple, maybe, and they did straight replace things eventually, giving you an excuse to use the money. That's not the worst thing. I don't really mind it. It makes loot exciting when you find a neat, you know, super sword or something, so I can see it still being okay to do that instead of just having everything be... You know... From the store, <laughs> but... That game had a system where if you were facing the enemy, and, and especially archers, you had a very good chance of blocking their shot, or their hit even, and you would counter them and do more damage. Making spears great because you can't counter them unless you also have that range. Um, it's just a good system. They replaced it with big armor and no evasion, which I feel like eliminates some of the randomness from the battle. Uh, and just makes archers really bad because they can't do damage anymore under any circumstance, back or forward. The maps were designed around archers being dangerous. I think they were too dangerous, but I don't want them to be useless. Just, I wouldn't recruit one if I played that game again, the way it currently is. Oh yeah, he takes eight hits. What's Arthur Blues doing? Ah, uh, I gotta...
We move on. Me and him had been talking about LPing that game. And the sequel, like, properly. <laughs> it was- I imagine that it's really boring to watch. I had a really fun time playing it, despite how much I had bored every second of it. Like, I was sad when it was over. But I really hated when I got stuck and there was nothing I could do about it. What do I do now? Let's go to the desert, I guess. I imagine watching it is just running around. Not getting anything done for hours and hours. I think I, I would recommend a little bit of guidance for that. Here's Happy Kane. Oh, is he crying? He's crying, canonically. Oh, there, there was just like... Three or four puzzles in the whole game that stumped me big time. Nothing else really felt bad, everything else connected. And there was a ladder I couldn't really see, it didn't look like a ladder at all. Stuff like that, I don't know. Like if those puzzles were better hinted or didn't exist, or if I just didn't get stuck on them, my playtime would have been half of what it was. I'm glad I played it the way I did, but uh, boy howdy, I wish I didn't get stuck. I think that I'm missing the big key, so I have to leave now. No, I have it. Okay. I don't have a fire source, so I can't kill the boss. Uh, well, folks coming in, I was just talking about Arcade Pits on GDQ this Wednesday, so check it out. There's flippers. And, um, we have Arcade Pit on our regular viewing every Sunday still. So we'll be doing that in about 20 hours. A little bit less. In fact, um... Actually, I don't know if I can talk about the players that are showing up or not yet. I probably can, but I'm not going to. I'm not sure. But I've already picked the players for this week, obviously. Anyway, it's going to be a good match. And this Monday, like in a day and a half, oh man, I'm going to be doing a marathon of various things. That should be good. Kane looks like Batman on the map. I'm looking for something. Somewhere here. Something's gotta give. I think I'm gonna go kill blind. That's an easy one. I can get that done. And while I'm doing that, I can think about what else to do here. Thanks for the tip. Ew. Gross, put that back. Don't actually put it back. I want it. I just think you look ugly now. Well, every time I do a monthly marathon thing, I let the patrons and subs vote on it. And uh, I'm trying to be more original with that content. It's gonna be a subathon, probably. Meaning that I'm gonna go for like six hours, and if people vote, or if people sub or drop bits or whatever, I'll extend it uh, up to 24 hours. And then I'm gonna get some sleep because we got our arcade pit on Wednesday. Most of the work that goes into arcade pit is setting it up.
I was talking about it a bit. It's a little frustrating, but the thing that matters most these days is regular subs, not prime subs, not gift subs. I get why, I guess, not gift subs. I don't really know why not prime, but there's a threshold that streamers need to hit, and September is a good chance for them to hit it. Um, I don't think that's a problem that I personally have at the moment, but maybe it is. I'm not even sure. <laughs> Patreon is great. For me, I wouldn't be doing this uh, without Patreon running. I wouldn't be able to make it. Oh man, really? No key, no key. I didn't think about it, but no key, no key. Skull Woods, I got one item. Um, we're gonna take voting through the inborn Twitch polar thing. It'll be fine, I'll just capture that. It's not that slow. We're not gonna spam their chat. I try to use my Prime sub every month, but it's uh, it's easy to forget about it. Oh, gross! No, no, <laughs> he's the Moon Cane. What? Where do you even get this outfit from? Why does he look like this? I'm truly immortal, though, so that's good, I guess. Put this guy back. I just picked Kane so I could make fun of him. It's fine. Listen, he didn't do it though. He was mind controlled. <laughs> Actually, within the contents of the own story that they wrote, Golbez was also mind controlled, and Golbez recognized that he should not be allowed to go back to Earth and hang out. It's over for Golbez, and he knows it. But Kane, Kane thinks that he's not got any kind of problem like that. What's a mind controlled war crime or two? Says Kane. Oh no, speaking of pretty much the same character if we're being real. Anyway. He didn't exile himself enough. I have not done or seen the FF4 expansion. People sure have mixed feelings about it. 
I expect that it's not great. Based just on what Square does with their, um... Well, first of all, I doubt it's the same writer. Not that that would be a great thing if it was, but it would be a start, probably, for it being more uh, in line with what was written. Usually those games are so long, um, storyline and gameplay wise, because of the random battles and stuff, that I I feel like I got more than what I wanted out of each one of them. Like they're always going on and on and I'm like I'm when I'm seventy percent of the way through it, I'm like, boy, this should be ending now. And it never does, and then it gets much worse. That's a common Final Fantasy problem that I'm running into a lot as I go through all of them. in here? No. Might as well take out the boss, but, um, I can't get the big chest, which I guess might have an item in it. Mystic Quest is really long. I think it's a neat game, but almost all the Final Fantasies are really, really long because of the random battles, and that one is one of the worst even though you can see the enemies. It was a pretty cool game. Dang, he got me. My moon armor got scratched. I'm thinking that um, this means that the big chest has the key in it for the chest itself. Meaning uh, it's... I definitely got everything else, so we can just leave. I need to find the mirror. And the boots. They're mandatory. Well, they might not be, actually. They are. Where to? Let's go to Eastern Palace. I like the games that are just a little bit more grounded. <laughs> it's easier for me to immerse myself in them. I think 6 is by and large alright, even though they still went for the god destroying the world problem. It felt like they scaled up to it in a natural way that most of them do not achieve. It wasn't some guy on the moon <laughs> who just showed up and is the big bad guy after all. It wasn't anything like that.
It was a dude that you know your characters hate a lot. Who keeps getting away with it. Sue Coden does a good job. Chrono Trigger did a tremendous job. I don't like the expanded universe, but Chrono Trigger's writing is pretty tightly done, and you can answer most of the questions you have about it through what they wrote in the first game. Hey, come here. I've not played X2 yet, or even, even seen it. I haven't seen any of it. I need to turn in my green pendant after I do this here. No, I don't have fire. So. I also don't have the bow. I don't mind the, the villain having a twist or whatever. It's when it comes out of nowhere and it's just kind of like... Feels desperate to make an even worse enemy than they were dealing with kind of thing. I don't, I don't like... The scope being brought to be bigger than it was out of nowhere. Lavos being a world-destroying menace was already known like an hour into the game. Nothing he does ever changes that. That's just that guy. Where to? I'm gonna turn in the green pendant, I guess. That's something. Shovel. Megus is a side character and he has a um, whole bunch of kind of unwritten story that you can just decipher from the bits, his actions don't seem like they make a lot of sense until you look at it under the scope of this guy's a real moron, he's a wizard, he thinks he can do everything by himself. And I, I like that. <laughs> I like that character getting destroyed. It's funny. And it's well written, it's believable. Is Kane. I don't usually kill him with Frog. Um, I don't really understand why he was being a big evil guy too much. He was just being a jerk, I guess, but the Frog has every right to do that to him, but Where's, where the hell do I go? Hmm. Let's go back to the Dark World, I guess. Head east. Dark Palace and all that pyramid. I don't know why I started up there. Or even why I even save and quit in the first place. Magus has a couple lines. Not very many. <laughs> he says Chrono got whacked because he's weak. That's a pretty good line. He has some interactions with Ozzy that are funny. And he has an interaction with Zeal that I think is of storyline significance. Not much of one. She doesn't recognize him. Which I think is kind of depressing. But that's fine. It's okay for it to be that way.
Kane looked a lot better before I got the holy armor. Don't worry. He, he was normal a minute ago. I'm going to go mess with the catfish uh, item thing. Can I get up there? Yeah. No? Yeah. No? I think I can. Power glove, I think is all I need. There's an argument for making the randomizer a little bit more even, but changing the way the vanilla game plays. And um, this community went the route of trying to keep it mostly vanilla. So you can get up here with just Power Glove instead of having to do anything else. It's so far out of the way though, it's a really bad check. I need to do the uh, regular scam catfish. It's Zora time, but I don't have a mirror yet still looking for it i have to find it as soon as i get that i'll get the lamp comes right with it i'll get the flippers when i find boots i'm always excited to talk chrono trigger lore There was some discourse about it uh, the other day in my Discord that was fun. Which is, um, Lavos gave everybody magic, like he actually was responsible for it. What is Chrono Trigger Plus? But yeah, Chrono Trigger, everyone got magic from Lavos. So the argument was he was a net good for the world if you can beat him. If not, then that's no good, obviously, but if you could. Then you get the advantages of having magic and all that. And I didn't really agree with that. <laughs> but I thought the whole point of the game was they played with fire. Big time. But yeah, he gave them all magic. And then he took it away. And yet the main character still had it. And there's plot reasons for that. And you don't really need Chrono Cross to fill in the holes to explain why. Well, Speccio says that magic came from a time after prehistoric era. And the people in Zeal seem to have more than just shadow magic. I haven't seen any removed content. Anyway, I think the concept is that humans were genetically modified to be able to do magic. And then it was taken away, but some of them had this, like, latent ability. And for some reason, Speccio, whatever the hell he is, can turn it on. I still don't have the lamp, and I really don't want to do the dark maze. I'm already in the dark here a little bit. With this nonsense. I don't even have a key. I'm gonna have to leave here. Actually, I can guarantee one, I think. Do I even have a way back? I don't think I do. I don't know that there's anything here. I'm gonna have to leave. Lavos was born, like, well, woke up 
and 12,000. And, um... Uh, needed... Didn't need them to have magic anymore, so he took it away. But... The events in the Undersea Palace actually messed him up, and he wasn't able to res for another couple thousand years. Which is a very small amount of time for him. Like, he got slightly injured, and decided to just take another nap. But, um... Took away their powers. Where the hell do I go? I'm stuck. I'm gonna go to the lake, I guess. It's not far from here, at least. I, I need something. Something's gotta give somewhere here. There's not that many checks left. Can't go in there. Not without a bug that I'm not gonna use. I guess I could, but that's not really gonna help me, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the writing is suggesting that Lovis took it away. And gave it in the first place. But that's a big time scam and that's not very helpful, thanks. I'm not sure where I can even go now, I'm stuck. I've got the log here if I need it. If I submit <laughs> to the seed. I wouldn't mind checking out land content that got cut, though the fact that it got cut makes me feel like it can't be too good. Like, they cut it for a reason. But, um... Man, Kane looks awful. Anyway. I think... I don't even... There's only, like, one chest I can even think of. It's this awful one up here. I don't actually like all the content in Chrono Trigger. Some of the dungeons are pretty lousy. Which makes me feel like if they cut it, it probably wasn't the top stuff. I put up with a lot of the dungeons because they're not very long. And the systems, the battle systems are so good that it doesn't really matter. Speaking of which, I need to play some more Sea Stars at some point. Mario RPG has better writing than Final Fantasy IV. What do you think about that, Kane? It's your fault. You're the re you're the reason, pal. That's that's enough. I think actually, that's something. Piece of junk. I can't do Eastern Palace yet, really. Um... Well, I can, dark room and all, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go to where I think they want me to go, which is the Dark Palace. Is that right? The first couple hours of Sea of Stars were pretty good. And it's beautiful. I don't know what it turns into at all. From what I played, I liked everything I saw. I think it was in logic. Actually. 
annoyingly i think that is um when i found the, the bottle i think that they then unlock that cave they think you have 13 hearts now you can technically get this That cave is really weird and crappy. I hate it, but I'm pretty sure that when you have a bottle, you can assume that that cave is unlocked for you. Logically, because you can just buy a red potion and squeeze through. I've heard a lot about Chain Echoes. That is a silly name for a game. I don't <laughs> That's almost the only reason I haven't really looked at it. I will probably try it soon. I've got a lot of stuff to play. Liza P is a pretty weird name, but it makes sense, I guess. I don't know what a chained echo is. I don't know what that means. Is that an echo that doesn't work? Liza P is a weird Souls-like game that maybe is good. It looks like it's decent and the end game maybe turns up a notch from what the demo was and the thing I just played. It was really easy now. I saw someone playing uh, a little midway boss and it looked a lot more intense. Yeah, I expect that if you like Bloodborne, you would like Liza P. Um... If you're willing to shift your vision to Pinocchio <laughs> instead of whatever FromSoft writes. But yeah, um, Arcade Pit tonight, obviously. Tonight meaning and, you know, tomorrow. But <laughs> oh man, really? There's nothing here. This is all the bow does, though. Do they? No, they wouldn't want me to kill the boss. Damn, the bow did not unlock anything. Unless I'm wrong, I can't think of anything the bow could do for me now. I don't have a fire source. I don't think they want me to do dark rooms. I'm trying to follow logic. What am I missing? <sighs> There's one chest or two in Skull Woods that I couldn't have gotten because I didn't have a key. If it's those, that's really annoying because I would have gotten them if they didn't have the chest out of order. This game used to, this randomizer used to never do that. It used to always guarantee a key in that one room and then they changed it. So this maybe is what's holding me up. I was on track for an easy run and then I never went back to Skull Woods after that happened. Maybe that's where it is. I can't think of anything else at all. So I'll just rack my brain if this isn't it. Might have to cheat. Might have to look it up. It's not guaranteed anymore, and uh, the proof is that I just had to go through it. There's also, um, I have the book and the Master Sword now, so up on the mountain, there's that tablet. I think having Chrono Trigger's mechanics is neat and all, but um, that's not the only thing that made that game great. Not just the time it came out either, it was tremendously ahead of the curve, it still is, kind of. <laughs> it's embarrassingly still kind of is. Um, its systems aren't perfect, I sure would like to tune them up a bit. Like, there's definitely community mods that fix Corona Trigger's glaring issues, like Marl having Cure 2 in a game where she can cure 1 for the full hill. Kind of an issue, makes her character useless. 
triple techs are a little busted. There's only a couple of them. Way too few of those for how cool they are. There should be so many more techs. Uh, some of the characters just don't hold up at certain parts of the game. Frog is a big one. Like, if you're using Frog, you're probably just... You should probably should just be using Robo. Because they're almost the same. Robo's just better at it. And that's a shame. I think that these characters should all have some kind of use. The game is easy enough, like almost all JRPGs, where you can use whoever you want to still win, but... <laughs> Marl's primary use is to put haste on the other two and then stand there and shoot her bow. Or cast ice. Ice 2, which is a spell for the mid-game, and that's it. Well, this is not it, so now what? Hey, welcome in. I don't think uh, I don't think we're getting any kind of thing with this seed. <laughs> I think this is pretty nasty. This is shaping up to be one of the worst ones of all time. I don't even have a... Oh man, what even crystal did I even get? I did two dungeons so far. Tower of Hera was the crystal. Did I go over here and get the chest in the room to the right? Yeah. I was gonna play some other stuff, but this this one's looking like a two and a half hour run, I think. Pretty ridiculously bad time here. Uh, the only thing I can think of now, I remembered that the chest uh, that's in the tablet up on the mountain. Can I get the hookshot cave? I can't, not without the... Yeah, I need the gauntlets upgrade. So there's nothing on the mountain for me except for this tablet. I think the indie community is the most likely to make a really good JRPG style game these days. Most big studios don't even do turn-based at all. Yeah, Chrono is way too strong. Luminaire is ridiculous. Um, all the big techs that cost 20 are crazy. Except for frogs and marls. Chrono is a character, almost. He needs some damn lines. Like, he shouldn't be quiet. There's no reason for him to be... Well, first of all, named Chrono. And second of all, a silent dude, he probably should have some kind of personality. He's not really quiet for any particular reason. Is this something's gotta be? Okay, that's... Fire Rod. <laughs> uh, that's something. Yeah, Chrono, I think, is supposed to be a player insert thing. I don't like it, but it's probably why they did that. Which makes the mid-game really weird. He does emote a lot. He has a lot of animations and stuff to speak for him. If he's just like, like not able to talk, that's fine. At least he's got that. Like Mario's quiet in RPG, and that's fine because he animates so much. You don't need him to talk too much. But it makes it harder to understand what's going on because he's not saying any damn thing.
all I can get from Chrono's like animations and reactions to things is he's kind of a dope and he really likes cutting things with his big sword. Like that's <laughs> two things I know about him. I don't know if he cares about his friends. Uh, too much. I think he cares about them some. Like he, uh, he maybe died trying to protect them. Maybe he just liked never giving up. Maybe he's pulling a Goku and got like slaughtered because of that. I I can't tell. Is he, is he trying to guard his friends, or is he really stubborn? I can't figure it out. Because he doesn't say anything. Nobody speaks in the uh, anime thing except for monsters. And Gonzalez got out of the robot. The Secret of Evermore has a camp protagonist and pretty interesting story going on. Uh, I really don't like the game though. Uh, and I roasted it pretty good when I played it last year. YouTube. Has some guys every once in a while that are super mad about that. Not that I care, <laughs> but that game has some tremendous gameplay problems. I don't think I could really recommend Secret of Evermore the way it is. It's it's almost unplayable. It's such a mess. It doesn't hold up at all. If it ever did. Those boss fights are gross. There's such a grind. There's confusion about where to go. It's hard as nails for no reason. And the spell system really adds some strange mechanics that I don't think work at all. What now? Uh, we can go to... Well, <laughs> I don't think they want me to do... There's no there's no place to light anything with the fire rod in Dark Palace. So they must want me to do Eastern, where they, they think it's okay to give me the fire rod, logically. I don't think they think that for Dark Palace. I don't think there's any, like, torch to light in that one. So let's do this one. And maybe I can get that item under the stairs in the castle. We have both of these, so that's an item I can go get. Well, the, um, the turn-based story heavy ones, the Final Fantasies are, I think they're replayable. I think they're good, mostly. Mechanically, most of them are very sound. That's their strength. That's their strength, for sure. The plot is randomly good or bad. <laughs> I guess that's objective, but... Oh, I hit the wrong switch. 
We fell for the trap for the first time in 20 years. Ooh. I haven't played Grandia 2. I knew somebody who liked it a lot growing up, so it's, it's on my list of RPGs. But, uh, at the time, I thought every single one of them would be great, so I definitely was a big fan of that genre. It took me a while to encounter the likes of, uh, man, what even was the first one I really hated? I didn't even mind, like, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest 1, grindy as that game is, and weird. Like, I was okay with that. I can't remember which one really put me off. But one of them sure did. <laughs> Whatever it was. I'm gonna go check the big crystals now. I'm looking for the boots, the mirror. I need them so bad. I can't do anything without them here. Everything's locked. I keep warping this way instead of using the flute. Did I get the mushroom? No. I don't think that they expect me to do the Aghanim Tower with... I might be wrong with the Fire Rod. I don't think they do. I don't think that will help me anyway. There's nothing up there that would be useful, right? Like, the only thing is the mushroom on the, the ledge. That's where it is, but I can't get that without the boots anyway. Yo. Give me that bomb. Persona has a game coming out that's a tactics game. And I was thinking I should maybe research that a little bit. I'm, I'm probably going to play it early. And, uh... I don't want to have no... I don't know anything about Persona. I've seen it... Uh, when some of my friends are playing it a little bit. Sure is a JRPG of some kind. It's a very interesting style. I don't know anything about how it even plays. They told me I didn't need to have any experience going in. I'm just interested in, like, the overall story arc or whatever. Finally, man. Wow. There's a lot of running back and forth in this disgusting seed. No one could do this in less than two hours, I feel like. It's so mean. I think it's finally stopped. I think we're done with the nonsense now, finally, because with the mirror and the lamp, I'm gonna be able to go wherever I want. You want to do some gimmick runs with me, Gilder? Well, there's so many like multi-world things, but there's also the concept of me running the sword and you running the feet <laughs> and stuff like that. Dual controller action, things like that might be fun. That's the kind of stuff I do with this. Where do I go with the mirror? Let's see. There's a lot of options with the mirror. What are we playing Isaac? It's Isaac time. Isaac? I like Isaac. Well... I can't swim until I get the boots. There's a tablet over to the left. I can go finish the Dark Palace. Probably should do that. I'm gonna check this tablet here first, and then the ledge. Oh, that sucks. 
Hope that heals. My arms have become pretty weak. Uh, the, like the nerves in them don't like the repetitive action of my phone. I'm probably gonna buy a smaller phone. The Pixel 8's coming out in like a week. But anyway, I need to get my hands uh, and arms a break way more often than I ever did before. Hmm, let's go here. Ever since I got this house, I do a lot of uh, labor outside. I always did, but now I do a, a lot. And that's that's heavy too. I'm in good shape otherwise though, because I get a lot of exercise on all that stuff, man. We got a big yard to mow and stuff. Let's warp. I have a Pixel 6. It's a pretty decent phone. So I've been waiting for the, uh, the new one. I didn't bother with the 7 because it looked like it's almost the same. Slightly better. And the 8 is almost the same, slightly better than the 6. Or the 7, then I figure I'm getting two upgrades. I upgraded when I broke my Pixel 2, actually. Um, you know what you can do is... You can use it as a camera with droid cam and it's a ridiculous webcams look nasty it's like a 500 dollar camera it's so good and it's portable too a ridiculous thing for it to be until the battery dies you can just lunk your pixel 3 around as a camera if you wanted to and it's so good um once i get it set up again i haven't done it that's probably what my pixel's uh gonna become it's a good I had a lot of trouble when I was streaming billiards, which I'm going to do again as well. Uh, we're still setting up my garage here, but I wanted to do a thing with billiards in my pool table and stuff that I thought would be fun. It didn't pop up as much as I hoped pop off with the community, but um, I wanted people to be able to play against each other with me as the person who was doing the shots that they were calling. And for them to be able to do that, they need to be able to see what the orbs are, what color they are, you know. You need to be able to identify which one of them is the nine ball and which one's the one. And that's actually really hard to do without a really good camera. So, phone solved that for me. Hmm, let's go. Right up the middle. I think big phones are a little overrated. <laughs> like the, uh, they're also more expensive. Like the Pixel 8 is um, gonna be like two or three hundred dollars less than the Pixel 8 Pro, and the only real difference between them is gonna be the camera, almost I think, and the size of it. It's gonna be a huge thing, and otherwise exactly the same. It's just got like a, a big zoom lens and stuff, which is cool, I guess, if you take a lot of pictures. But man, I do not want a big phone like that. They keep getting bigger. It's, it's actually causing me some injuries at this point, so... Need to just take it back a notch here, I think. I had a whole layout built for uh, interactive billiards and stuff. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. I'll be getting back into it soon. As soon as I can. My first smartphone was like the HTC Incredible, which is like five inches tall. And I thought that was big and big enough for me. And I'm still kind of feeling that way. I had it, like I gave it away recently to, you know, people who just take cell phones for donations. That's why would I hold on to it? But I saw it again and I held it and I'm like, damn, what a tiny phone. <laughs> but um, it still would do me just fine. I, I feel like phone games are just atrocious. I can't, I've looked for good ones and like you know what the good ones are stardew valley papers please xcom maybe which has a weird multiplayer thing sort of maybe that maybe works sometimes and then every other game is like 
pay 30 bucks to get some gems to reduce your grind. That's right, the best phone game is the best PC game. Terraria, Stardew Valley, all those games for five bucks. They're so cheap and their versions are so good. And then all the actual just phone only games are some of the greediest designed grind things I've ever seen. It's really hard to find a good one. I've tried. I've done a couple sponsored ones looking at some of the more popular ones and I just I'm not into most of them. Like Mech Arena was pretty cool. I could see getting into that one. I did that one as a sponsorship a bit. And that's why I did it, because I played it and I'm like, this is alright. Uh, wish it was unlocking a little faster. But it's a game, so like an actual game. <laughs> I think the card games also have a good shot at that. But most of them are just like these weird games that just... I don't even understand them. You like zoom out and there's a... Your number 5,300,000 of the cities on a world map and you can attack the other cities and take their gold and stuff and it's just it's like weird RTS against idle players. And it's got like 10 other games built into it. And none of them are good. <laughs> and that's your standard phone thing. I don't, I don't get it. It's a universe I'd never got into. I was pretty late getting into smartphones to begin with. There we go. This is Dark Palace, all done. And I did uh, Skull Woods also, I didn't mark it off though. And Blind. Do I have six crystals? Did I just not mark them off? Am I further along than I thought? Maybe I am thinking this seems bad when it's not actually that bad. Let me look at my inventory here. I did four. Which one am I thinking I did that I didn't? I did six. But, uh... One of them is dependent. Okay. Well, that Stark Palace is done. I think, um... I marked that one wrong. Blinds is here. Tahara Eastern Palace. Did I not do Skull Woods? I did. What am I missing? Why do I think I have five crystals? Swamp Palace is marked wrong. No, it's not. What the heck? I think one of my crystals is the green pendant. I just have it marked wrong. That's what I'm doing, okay. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing next. And I can't even, I don't even have my tracker right. I like the goofy phone games that are just silly. And I like like Picto Cross and stuff like that. But when I want like an actual game, there's nothing. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I can't believe in 15 years there's still nothing, but it's it's almost the same crappy market that it was when I'm like, are people really dropping this much money on these? And they are, so they don't make anything else. I think I can go to the back of the palace now. Let's go to the this way. Yeah, I bet it's not profitable. Like, I've tried playing some of the more interesting, like, idle games and stuff, because I think those are neat when you just go in once a day and manage something for a bit. Like, that conceptually would be a fun game. It's not designed to be fun, though. It's designed to take your money, so it ends up sucking. But, um... The 
the amount of ads that you view on a game like that alone is more than enough income for most devs to be profitable. Especially since they don't like do anything to maintain it. It's a single player game. Um, it's not like they run a server or anything. It's just all profit once it's released and out. It's all profit, you know. So them having a $30, $200 for that matter, gem package or whatever to reduce the, the grind is kind of gross, actually. Hmm, where to? It's not about profitability, it's about squeezing every penny, yeah, for sure. Somebody will pay for those packages, or they wouldn't exist. If you ever open a game up that says, give me a thousand dollars and I'll give you a hundred gimme tokens, <laughs> or whatever, somebody bought that, and a lot of people will continue to buy those, that's why they're doing it. Man, where do I go? I'm stuck again, but this time I have some resources, so there's stuff open. I must be forgetting something somewhere. I can finish the desert, I guess. Because, yeah, the giant head of, of Cain is really silly. I can finish the desert because I have fire now. I couldn't do it before. But I don't think I'm gonna get anything for it. But I might as well do something to keep me busy. This is a thing, I don't wanna sit around. I can use the time to I always thought Peggle was an underrated game, like, for what it was. It's like 10 bucks for <laughs> that game and the sequel, too, on, on PC. And then Peggle Blast came out on mobile. A game I don't think you can even get it anymore, but it was a free-to-play thing that would restrict how many games you could do a day, and it had stages that were designed for you to almost certainly fail. Unless you bought their stuff that would let you like blast extra pegs and stuff. It was gross. It was it was simultaneously the best and worst version of that game. Because it really had a lot of cool stuff going on. It looked great. It was like Peggle 3. Equivalent of quality and they did that to it. It sucked. Peggle Nice is awesome. Peggle 2 is, eh, it's okay. <laughs> I didn't care about it that much. How is Terraria on mobile? That's a game that I want to get to the end game of, like for real. Like I, I played it the day it came out with my buds and we demolished all the content in three hours and I became a speedrunner of that content for a while. That's something. Anyway, I'm wondering if it can be played on the phone and how multiplayer works. Hard mode, I've gotten to like the first hollowed stuff when the hard mode was new. They've added like 10 tons of stuff after that. And it seems like a lot. And it seems like you need a team of elite players to be able to do it even. I would like to try it, but uh, I don't know that we can accomplish it. Realistically, I don't know if it would be good stream material either. I don't know if people want to watch that. I doubt it. I got everything that was in the hard mode update when it came out as well. 
Like, I, I got the harp and all those other silly... The shark gun and all that other silly stuff. But every update they put out added another, like, 10 hours of content minimum, and so I'm 100 hours behind now. Is this good? It's gotta be. Oh. What am I missing now? Desert's done. I still don't have the boots. Can't swim without the boots, so we can't do Swamp or Ice Palace. I can't get into Tower of Hera without the mitts, which I'm still missing somehow. Unbelievably. I think this is the latest I've ever seen those be. Ever. It's confusing to not have them. I'm I'm lost, I think. I'm just mixed I'm missing something somewhere because of that. Because I don't know what to do without them. Should I just kill Aghanim in the meantime while I think? I feel like I've done everything. <laughs> I feel like I've done nearly everything that there is. Yeah, Turtle Rock is what I mean. And the Hookshot Cave. I can't get up there. I can't do anything there without the, the big gloves. You need the big gloves to get up there. There's no way in otherwise. I think Peglin is moving fast. I'm hoping that they fix up the things I don't like about it. I think they mostly did good with the updates they've seen. I think they're a little bloated for content in the same way Isaac kind of is. Uh, they need to cool it with some of the orbs. Uh, in some way, they need to control the orbs. I think you just need to be able to build your deck better. That's what you need. You need to be able to build your deck better. And they need to make some of the orbs good when they just never are. And then you'd have something going on, I think. I think that's the problem. Other than that, I think that they... I mean, I'd be encouraged. A mobile game sounds good to me. They can throw that out. I'll buy it. What are they competing with? <laughs> I mean, really. Those mobile games are so gross. I don't think Peglin's gonna charge me like five bucks to do another turn on a, uh, if I don't make it. If I just barely die to a boss, I can have one more go for $4.99. I don't think they're gonna do that. So they're already above 99% of those games. Yeah, you can post whatever you want. If you got a sub on your name, you're already guaranteed. But you're probably a regular anyway. You should be able to post any links you want. I went to Skull Woods. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, so I went to Skull Woods, and I couldn't get through because I was missing the key. And then I went back, and I did Skull Woods completely. I'm pretty sure I got everything on my second visit. I was worried about that because I missed it because of the key forcing me to reset. Excuse me. Which chest did I leave? When I first went in there, I got the first ones, the first three that you get from the hole. And then I went back and opened the big chest. And um, it took me like 30 minutes, but eventually I went back to the big chest and the one on the way to the boss and then the one before the boss. Ow. I did the hole first because, um, it didn't give me the key, so I got stuck in there. That's why it's split. Oh. 
I don't I don't even know how routing would avoid the hole. Do you just use keys? I'm five years behind on routing tech. If you ever wanted to race somebody from 2018, I'm your guy. This guy's guarding the mushroom, but killing him isn't going to do anything for me. Uh. I've heard of Icebreaker. That's a gum, right? What do I do now? <laughs> uh, I might give up here in a second. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of anything I could have possibly missed. A project as well. I'm not going to open videos while I'm broadcasting probably but I'll check that out later if you ever want to share something like that uh, I opened up a forum in my discord because I was curious if people actually wanted that feature or not and I th actually think it's pretty good uh, you could post in there if you wanted to make a whole thread about any particular thing like that Somebody asked me to expand the server for, like, more channels, more discussions, and the forums just seemed like an easy fix. And I thought it was an easy... Is there an item in East Turn? That might be a thing. I don't remember if I did that or not. I skipped it, it was out of laziness, because I could have gotten it. I was pretty dead set for no particular reason on following the logic, and I didn't have any fire source yet. I didn't do any kind of... Fake flippers, I know I know how to do it, it's a really easy one. Uh, so even even I know how to do that one, and I haven't done it because I don't want to really. I don't think it's going to give me the answer because um, I'm going to need to find the boots. Wherever they are, it's in a natural, reachable, I can get to where it is right now without any kind of gimmick. So almost certainly whatever's under the bridge is useless, or if it's not useless, it's like a sword upgrade or something. I'm looking for the dang boots, because the boots and the flippers are tied together as everything I need to win right now. Okay, well that's... good, <laughs> I guess. I mean, can't ask for a better place for the astronaut than that. I wish that was about the boots, though. I did go this way. I'm, I'm big time moving away from Twitter, like, permanently. Unless it completely shuts down and reopens run by like Bank of America or something <laughs> like completely different management uh, so I'm just moving to Discord having everything so I opened a forum there uh, 
Ah, uh, Guinness Tower isn't open. I'm missing something silly, probably. Did I ever go back here? I'm sure I did bomb in here. I miss the usefulness of Twitter and the funniness. All in one place was kind of a mess. I don't really have a replacement. But it, it, it couldn't be worse. It's so hard to use. It sucks so bad. It's not really a place to build your presence. That's right. Uh, not using Twitter is bad for my business. But that's too bad. This guy probably will take off in its own way, but it's still locked up as far as I know. <laughs> oh, that's right, the Hera basement. That's probably where it is. I didn't have fire for that. I went all the way back up there and checked the tablet, which had the fire rod on it. And if I had remembered, I would have checked that immediately after. And the lamp is on the other side of it as well. Both fire sources are surrounding the Tower of Harrow. Flanking it. Yeah, I don't think co-host is really for building your audience, so... Broadcasters need to be seen. Our job is like based on popularity. Like I, um, that sub number is my livelihood, whether I like it or not. I don't talk about it much, but if that number is really low, I'll be getting a second job and putting less work into our K pit. And if it's really high, I have to work a lot less. Like, if I'm 10% more popular than regular for some reason, the amount of grinding I have to do is... I can have a day off. Like, it's a huge difference. I may sleep today. Because people know who I am for a while. I'm pretty sure this is it, yeah. It has to be. Unless there's something else. I can't think of anything else. I think if this isn't it, I'm gonna look it up. We have scoured this place at this point. I can't get into Hookshot Cave yet because I don't have the gloves, which might be this. It would be annoying if they were. I sure would like the boots instead and get the gloves naturally in a dungeon. There we go. It's the boots! I'm gonna immediately go get the flippers. And then I can do whatever the hell I want. I think that's going to open up the rest of the world. Except for the power gloves upgrade, but that's whatever. I can get into the dungeons now. I can do Swamp Palace, and I bet they're in there. And if they're not, then they're in the Ice Palace, but I, uh, I can't get in there, can I? So it's got to be in the Swamp Palace. There's still nothing else. <laughs> it's got to be in there. When Gmail first came out, it was locked up, it had invites, and also it had a number that was increasing like one bit at a time that was visible on the main page, and it was bragging about this being how much storage you get. 
and it started at like two gigs and it was climbing and i don't know what it's at now but for some reason they decided to do a, a counter to show you a a growth of how big your gmail account was becoming if you wanted it to be yeah it was ridiculous two megs was ridiculous at the time for email for free gig sounds tiny actually is it really that small these days considering i have emails from 2003 <laughs> i don't know This was a fun ride, but I think we're nearing the end of this seed. rods in Ganon's tower apparently said that tablet but I still might have to go in there actually no I wouldn't have to do that unless the red cane was I, no it couldn't be I don't think I have to I think that's despite how much I hate the seed and I think it's one of the worst ones I've ever seen even without my mistakes I think that this is a seed where we're not going to have to do those dungeons at all so this could be dramatically worse. They front-loaded all the badness. I don't think we're going to have to do Mire or Turtle Rock. And maybe not even Ice Palace. Though I'm not sure which one is the crystal. One of them must be. I think it's, I think it's Mire that is the, the other crystal. missed. I forgot I picked up the mushroom, actually. Or I could. I haven't yet. I didn't forget, actually. I haven't yet. I got access to it just now when I got the boots. That's right. I didn't forget about that. I just haven't been able to do it yet. I've been looking at it for the whole game. Gotcha. Do I even care to explore? I think I'm looking for the right cane still. I'm gonna check over here. I just got access to Ice Palace. Access to the hookshot cave and all that other stuff on the mountain, which is the first place I'll probably go. Unless I, uh. Okay. 
Unless I just feel like grabbing the crystal real quick. Depending on which dungeon it is. I like not having the red cane, but I don't need it for anything again as tower. It's just a little tricky without the fire rod sometimes in there. It's the worst, but without the red cane, can't do a couple trick shots, that's all. I don't remember which one's crystal. I feel like ice rod, or I feel like ice palace is one of the pendants. And turtle rock is also. I think we need the red cane. That's what I think. I think it's mire. Big 20s. We're still missing some nice swords, silver arrows. Never gonna find that stuff. There's a lot of stuff opened up on the map now. that I can go do. Yeah, I'm not going into Total Rock here. There's no reason to. Because if I have the red cane, I'm already done. And I can win with this crappy sword. It sucks. What can be done by me? Not only can it be done, it can be done by me, not just humans. This one. Not particularly good at it, but I can do it. It would be nice to have a, another sword, though. I wouldn't turn that down. Dang. I don't know that this is the best way to do damage to this guy. Maybe. I feel like it takes four shots. I'm wrong. Okay, whatever. Some Palace was not great, but that's okay. Actually, I had the gloves, so I had to come here. I was kind of hoping it would give me everything. We're gonna need the red cane. There's about 10 items I can get on the overworld before I even think about going into Ice Palace. I don't know what this is yet. Ice Palace that much. When it's when it's like able to be mostly skipped, I can really cruise through it, but in this case it's gonna be tedious and pointless to do, maybe. It's a dungeon that takes a while and doesn't have anything in it. Yeah. Oh, you can't play the flute in the water? Yes you can, you just can't hear it. Thank you. 
Vanilla Ice Palace is gross. I feel like you can just do Mire first, though, right? Like, there's nothing in the Ice Palace that you need to do before you do Mire. So you can just bring the Red Cane and skip it a little bit. The way they made it was, I think they wanted you to loop around the whole dungeon. So, screw that. <laughs> that sucks. That's bad. That's bad design. So you could just... They actually changed that, and I think in the Game Boy Advance version or whatever, they removed that as a thing. Not going great yet. The next fast checks. Oh, that, that ledge up there has an item, but get it. Yeah, if you're good at bomb jumping, you can just do that. And not do that loop at all. It's a... I think it's one of the harder bomb jumps in the game. I hate it. I, uh, I have a lot of trouble with bomb jumps in this game. The way he falls into the pit, he just slips in like he's being sucked in with a vacuum cleaner. I have a hard time getting the pixels to line up because of that. But if you can do that jump, that also works. And yeah, you can you can cheat through the wall somehow. I don't know anything about that. Things are looking up. I'm pretty sure the item on the ledge is useless, but I can actually check real quick. Wow. Okay. Ice Palace is looking more and more like the answer here. But before that, I'm going to check the graveyard chest. And grab the mushroom. I think that's everything that I unlocked. I think that's all. No, there's three more items next to Meyer I can check as well. I know about this one. It's useless. But let's grab this mushroom real quick. Bees! fix the tree. I'll never forget the bird in this map. It killed both me and the guy I was racing against in the last tournament I participated in, in like 2020. And um, it was a close race, and I lost. And if I didn't also die to that stupid bird, we had like no items at all. And we both tried to sneak past, and we both died the same way. That bird hits for like four hearts.
I'm trying real hard not to do Ice Palace. <laughs> Next year, one second. I think the other bottles are red and uh, green, so whatever. Let's go down here. There's three items outside and two in. Maybe one of them is the red cane. And if that's not it, then it almost certainly is an ice palace. I don't see any reason why I should do Ice Palace first. Like, even if it is in there, it's still kind of silly. Just gotta find this last missing item. I'm not sure if it's still true, but at least as of the last time I really kept good track of my times, 205 was one of the worst seeds I've ever had, and I did badly at it too. So we're getting some pretty legendary bad run here from a seed that could still be much worse. Like, at least I'm not going to have to do Turtle Rock. <laughs> so there's like five minutes right there saved. But at the end of the day, I guess that's not that much. one of the items in here. If I um, find the other one, I'm just gonna leave. Because then it must be Ice Palace. They must actually want to screw me that hard. So there's two items in this dungeon, and I already got one of them, it was a big 20. Oh, I need to reset that, crap. Why isn't it re- really? Wait. Am I gonna make it? <laughs> I made it, I guess. <laughs> it's junk anyway. Love that refill right there. Oh no. 
Once again, I ask, am I gonna make it? I'll make it. Palace. Three atoms in here. One of them, hopefully, is the red cane. I don't know where else it could be. You ever play Alundra? I gotta get everybody to play Alundra at some point. Every Link to the Past player on this earth ought to play Alundra, in my opinion. Well, a lot of players also should do it. Though, there is a patch to get the English version while having the Japanese damage charts, and you should use that. Because it's already even originally a little bit on the steep side for how many times you have to hit the enemies and then the American version took the tables and just multiplied it times three for some reason. Alundra could have a randomizer. That would be weirdly elaborate. That game is like 100 hours long, but it could. It would make sense to do that. It is this kind of game. I don't need to do the bomb jump. I'm gonna regret it. Not doing it, I bet. I've never played Alundra 2 yet. It has nothing to do with the other one, so... Alundra is like the PlayStation's Zelda game. It's Landstalker's sequel if you played Landstalker. Same devs somehow got the ability to make that game put it together it's got that isometric land stuck or jumping that you might love probably don't you get used to it though red cane red cane oh that's one i think What song is repeated? Alundra is such a wild game. You want to talk about unpredictable? Boy, howdy. I like writing that throws me off. I was talking about how... There we go. Finally. I was talking about how Final Fantasy and stuff usually is trying really hard in silly ways and ruins the story, but I don't think Alundra did that. I think Alundra achieved it. They did the wild things. And they had all kinds of twists and curves, and I couldn't see any of them coming. And it was exciting. And sad. And, uh... Boy, howdy. What a, what a story, man. And it's 50 hours of Zelda, too, at the same time.
Like it's like it's like this game if it were like ten times longer. It just keeps on going. And if they weren't afraid to kill people indiscriminately, like just permanently, people that you learn and develop characters and then they're gone. They just get buried. And you can just visit their tomb. And their gravestone says they're smelly. And that's the way Alundra is. I think it starts to get a little long. But, uh... This kind of game... It's easy for it to last a long time before you get tired of it. It's mechanically fun. And they keep giving you new, t new tools, and the environments are way different from each other, and there's really interesting puzzles. I think I need another key, actually. I think I have to go down here. I don't know exactly what the runtime for a Lundra would be for a new player, but I bet it would be... Like, I watched uh, Author Blues do it, and I bet it's at least 30 hours. That's right, Alundra has a sword in it that is on a statue, and when you talk to the statue, the screen flashes and the dude tells you that you're, um... Oh man, I need to hit the boost. I still need the big key, anyway. I'm missing some stuff here. I'm distracting myself from my Alundra talk here. <laughs> Damn. Myers giving me the business. Did I get this key? Yeah. Anyway. There is a sword in Alundra that is way better than your main sword. It's like the gold sword in this game. It's like if you're charged hit from the best sword you can get at the very end of the game. It was always just the regular hits. It's just that good. And you can't get that sword unless you game over it a bunch and reloaded the save and tried again and over and over again and if you did that like 10 times the statue that gives you the sword won't insult you anymore it'll just be like hey take this is there a key i need i don't know maybe i don't need a key there's nothing else to loot I don't think I need a small key. I can't remember. I think I think on a Turtle Rock that I need a small key for, not this. There's no more small key doors, I don't think. But if there is a key missing, it's in the big chest. Right, I gotta hit that switch again. Alundra is a working designs translation, so it's a little goofy because of that. But I happen to like it as a translation. It's it's okay. This time. Yeah, the surfer guy rules. Don't spoil the game if you know about it, because it sounds like there's people here who might play it, but... Uh, there is a character who his his whole thing is that he falls for a succubus and you save his dumbass. That's all that is interesting about him. But because his sprite looked like he was like from the beach, like he was just a beach guy, they gave him this a like they gave him this attitude and everything he says is like like he's a ninja turtle almost. And he becomes your best friend basically because of that. visit him all the time to know what he's thinking.
1.0 release of what, Alondra? I don't know. But, I, like I said, I imagine that the best version to play is the one that uses a ROM hack and puts the Japanese damage tables on the English translation. Or just playing it in Japanese if you can read Japanese. <laughs> that would be fine. Though you'll miss out on the surfer guy. You're gonna get a boring regular guy. A canonically accurate boring guy. might have betrayed me, I don't know. Maybe the items were in a good place and he moved them while I wasn't looking. This has been a tremendously bad run, so I would blame him, yeah. I think Maddie's right that the only reason he could be mind controlled like that and not like Cecil or any of the other cast like none of the other, like not not Yang not Rydia none of them none of them got mind controlled why is that it's got to be because Kane just has a crush on Rosa who doesn't care about him at all really in that way and lets himself be mind controlled because he sucks when does my uh mind control happen to Yang I don't remember that Oh, it was when he was the guard in the town, yeah. That was after his kingdom fell. I can, I can see why he'd be depressed over that. Yeah, he got eaten by Leviathan. His town fell apart. He, he could be sad and mind-controlled after that. That's fine. If we're basing mind control on weakness, he earned it. <laughs> Kane didn't earn it. Play the legacy cane, boy howdy. There's a cane. I think they were thinking about making more of those, so I don't know how they're gonna do it without the voice actors. At least one of them is no longer alive. Um, Tony J, Megabyte from Reboot and other villains. He was a villain. He was like the main villain, and then he was another different main villain in the sequel soul reaver and all of them <laughs> like kept on being in this series i don't know how they would replace him he's got that voice that is like that's him yeah raziel's voice actor was pretty old uh when soul reaver was out so that doesn't surprise me and again another great voice actor So if they're bringing that franchise back, they got some big shoes to fill. But they had talked about it a little bit. They had like a poll on what people wanted.
Legacy of Kane and Castlevania Symphony of the Night were my my two PlayStation games that I had like first. My two vampire PlayStation games. Uh, and they're not very good, <laughs> but I liked them anyway. Uh, Legacy of Kane, that is. Symphony of the Night's fine for what it is. I talk about it being a uh, way too easy and a little bit of an introductory Castlevania game for Metroidvanias, but I, I like it still. I like Legacy of Kane a lot, despite it being a kind of a bad Zelda. And then Soul Reaver is a unplayable. It does not hold up at all, but I sure liked it when it came out. It's no Ocarina of Time. Like it, it is such a disaster to play. I tried, man, it's boring. A lot of block sliding and gray terrain and weird boss fights. I think that the first game is the best one and it's not the most popular. Where you're playing a, a Zelda-like guy, it's the easiest of all of them too, on top of everything else that's wrong with it. You have a fairy in the form of the Heart of Darkness and you get so many of them. It's like if you had 90 fairies, it's exactly like that. If this was the game that you were playing and you had 90 fairies, that's what Legacy of Kane does. There's even a place where you can just buy them and have actually got 99 of them if you want, if you can find it. You cannot lose. <laughs> you can't fail. The more treasure you find, the better off you'll be. And that game is loaded with treasure that you might not find, but you don't need to find that much. It's got like an entire city that you can only access at night during a full moon, which happens like, man, like every four hours of gameplay. And you probably won't figure out that that's how that works. There's a, it's an entire city, like a huge city, crazy big werewolf city, full of loot in that silly game. If you did play that, I would recommend the PC version because the load times on the PlayStation are a nightmare. But I don't know how easy that is to run. Legacy of Kane 2, Soul Reaver 2, and Defiance are not great games. Legacy of Kane 2 and Defiance are probably the only ones that are like hold up at all. But man, I wish they were better because I like the universe. You get to play a bad guy who's actually pretty nasty. But he's still saving the world, sort of. Too early. Silvers? Oh. Dogged it. That was a perfect setup. I'm missing.
Can't believe after two and a half hours, we're finally free. Hey, what's that bat? Oh no, it's not over. What? It was mind control. Man. Just like Kane. Which is worse, amnesia or mind control? It's a plot device. <laughs> How about Final Fantasy VII? Hitting both check marks at the same time. I think Ganon's being mind controlled by the Triforce. I can see that. Ganon didn't do anything wrong here. Gotta forgive Ganon. Right, I gotta do spins because I don't have a silver arrows. <laughs> Great. Well, at least they're easy spins. They would be for a better player. Where do you rank waking up out of a dream and everything was irrelevant? In the amnesia versus mind control timeline. The Mario 2. Toki Toki Panic Indy. I think I give that version of it a slide. That's the only time that it's okay when it's Mario doing it. Because that implies that this goofy makes no sense adventure. It's just a dream, and that makes a lot more sense than what's actually happening to him in those scenarios. Two twenty-eight thirty-six is my new worst time probably ever. <laughs> it's just. I got good enough at regular Zelda before doing the randomizer, and it never took me no two hours. That's like easily 20 minutes worse than what I remember my worst time being. With no deaths. Because how could I possibly die with the red armor at the start of the game? I think that I like mind control less by a large bit because amnesia is a tedious thing to just have written, but it's not that big of a deal because you do, you do kind of learn with the character a little bit about the world that you're in and that's okay. I guess I think it's uninteresting. I think it's a bad way to do it, but you do when you're playing a video game, have this problem where you have, you don't want them to be one punch man right out the gate. You need to learn how these mechanics work and build him and grow with him. So amnesia is just like a very lazy kind of way to do that, but it's, it works. It makes sense. Mind controls sucks. <laughs> I don't think it's ever good. I don't like the concept. Like it would be all right, maybe in like a robot game or something. Otherwise it doesn't make any sense to me as a device. And it's usually just to, to make a silly twist happen.
I've never played Other M. Should I put that on the list? <laughs> well, folks, I'm doing a marathon on Monday. And we got Arcade Pit Sunday night here, which is, you know, today at this point. But in a while, it'll be at 8 p.m. The marathon is at 4 p.m. Eastern. And I'll be running the Subathon of Swords if the subs are above certain thresholds, I'll add time to it. That's the idea. And we have GDQ, Hotfix, Arcade Pit, Wednesday, this Wednesday, and every other Wednesday after that, for now. That's what it looks like, the calendar. And if you're in Pittsburgh for some reason, I'll be on stage next Sunday, and I'll still be here for Arcade Pit. I might have some company with me. Gary the old man, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Look at that Ganon. That's nice art. If you're writing a character like Cloud Strife, who is supposed to be this great warrior, the amnesia makes sense for making the player and him not be ridiculous. But if your character is like learning as well, like they're not already a champion, I don't think you need it. But I'd rather you find a different way to write it anyway. I think that mind control is a very ungenuine way to develop a character. They could just have their own damn motives. It, it kind of steals their personality away. It's just some other guy and everything that they did doesn't matter. It's a lot like waking up out of the dream ending in my head. It's just a really, if that's in the story, I'm almost not interested in it anymore. It's just such a silly way to write something. And it's so popular. The concept of hating a guy one minute and then, oops, it wasn't his fault, whatever, and then everything he did didn't matter. All the destruction <laughs> happened, just whatever, and he's just on our team now. And then he does it again, Kane. I'm looking at you. I picked Kane just so I could roast him. I was planning on doing some other stuff, like FTL or Into the Breach, or maybe start next calm Enemy Within run, but it is getting late because the seed sucked so bad. I, <laughs> I just took like an hour away from my planning here. I'll be on for Arcade Pit later tonight, and um, we're going to have a speed bump race, if you'd like to get in on it. And I think I have a sponsored game. I've been doing those on Sunday night, because uh, not only do I have a lot of folks watching at that point, I also... It's just a good opportunity for me to set aside some time to play those for a little bit and see if I like the new games coming out. So I'll be doing that as well. 
if you want an easy way to support, you can just watch those, but um, I am genuinely checking the games out at the same time in my variety channel here. I guess there's a difference between mind control being like I can't control my body he's making me say these things and I'm just like trapped in a actual hell inside of my own body versus what Kane had going on I, I'm pretty sure where he actually is just like pushed a little bit to be a jerk and he's like yeah that makes sense I'll, I'll be a jerk that's that's cool I think those are two different types of mind control and I don't really like either of them but one of those is much worse than the other Yeah, well, I'm up for hijinks anytime. I was also thinking about a thing that I probably will do maybe tomorrow or Monday. I mean, where we're playing Mario Kart and I'm blindfolded and somebody's giving me direction. How about that? I think that I'm good enough at Mario Kart that I could do it if I knew what map it was. If they just told me what the map was and they were steering me a little bit. And none of that auto drive stuff. We'll turn that off. I think I could get through. I don't know if I'd win, but I think I could cross the finish line. If we were doing like 50cc or 100cc, whatever, you know, slow mode. I think I could do it. I tried to do that with Bubsy and it was impossible. But I think Mario Kart would be easier. I played the first couple levels of Bubsy well enough that I knew what was being described to me and I couldn't do the jumps in that slippery game. But hey, if you're uh if you're a patron or sub and you want to vote on uh what you want to see on Monday, that is open right now, so go check it out in the Discord or on Patreon or whatever. Either place. Any tier should be able to access that. Hey, have a good one. I'll find somebody to host real quick. Who's online? I want to host the Drifter playing some uh, Contra 3. Have a good one. <laughs> 